Hey guys, before we get this video started, make sure to go ahead and consider subscribing. If you enjoy the video, subscribing doesn't hurt at all and it only helps me better my content. I'm a small channel and every subscriber helps. Enjoy the video. Welcome to my room. It is dark, cramped, it's dirty, but it gets the job done. So in today's episode, we're going to finish up building that robotic hand and then we're going to start talking about the issues with the rest of the arm. Right here, I actually have a prototype that I made of an arm that I was going to use by having more strings and mu more muscles that were going to control the whole thing. And this is how it turned out for a 3D print. Um, it, it works somewhat. <laughs> this is a ball joint that would attach to a shoulder, a lot of shoulder movement. So if you want to think of it like my shoulder, my shoulder here arm. This is the elbow, the elbow, and right here, or what it was supposed to be, oof, it's been a while since I used this thing, and right here, this guy is how the wrist turns. So it, as you, so it works, it does work. What's attached to them are a crap ton of strings, and we also have this guy. This was my idea of a muscle. It was going to be a very small muscle fiber. A lot of people on YouTube have made these. I made them. I hated them. They were garbage. I didn't like them. So I have a new prototype that I'm going to try making. This right here is a simple muscle, a simple hydraulic muscle. Easy enough, right? We got a, a string that would be attached to the hand. This is all for the wrist. This is all for hand movement. String that would be attached to the hand. The actual muscle right here. And then we have water. I keep the string in tension by constantly pulling on the string. Let's say that right now a finger is attached to this. I go ahead and I bring the water forward and the muscle goes down and it pulls the string. Okay, that, just like that. Now what I want is I want this to be maybe half the size. Actually, no, same size, but a lot thinner. And I want for this tube to be your placed with a completely different tube and a linear actuator. So a motor is going to spin and it's going to push this guy forward. It's going to push this guy forward, which is going to push water into here and it's going to cause a contraction. Now I know what you're thinking. Dude, why don't you just use a regular linear, linear actuator? Or why don't you just have a motor that spins and then just pulls a string? That's a good question. This thing is stretchy. Strings, these strings aren't. All right, so so unlike the finger, if I were to apply tension on a string and keep my finger from bending, the string would break. Here, ho oh, oh, ho oh, ho, string no breaky, because this thing would just pull and it would just stay constantly in tension. A, a water muscle is definitely perfect. It doesn't overheat. We can, I believe, make it very small, and we're going to do an entire video on just building muscles. And then for this arm, we have to rebuild this completely. This is completely wrong. Okay, we need to find a way, and I kind of solved it here. We need a way to be able to ha allow for a, a rotation for a wrist joint. And this is basically how the wrist joint is. It's two parts. If I pull this off here, it's just a little swivel, and it just swivels around it. And it comes all the way down here, and then we have another swivel. So it's like a dual swivel, kind of, except the swivel kind of gets screwed up. It's a dual swivel. Now, as you know, the wrist can go a maximum of 100 and of roughly 180 degrees all the way around. This is just the wrist by itself. So we need to find a way to get just roughly 180 degrees. This cannot do that. Not perfectly. That's what we're going to try to figure out. We're going to finish the hand and we're going to see by trying to make a prototype. Let's hope it works. Let's get to work. All right, so getting started here, we're just going to quickly run through making the thumb part of this hand. As you know, in the first episode, what we did is we went ahead and made the top portion, and now we're going to apply the strings, and we're going to apply the bottom portion. I'm just marking some lines here for where I know I'm going to have to put the strings. This can kind of get messy, so I have to make sure I know exactly where I'm putting everything. I'm getting some heat shrink tubing all set up so that I can move the strings through them. This will make it so that the strings can only move in one direction, and it's easier for a pull. I'm now sticking them all on right next to where I would put a string location. And I'm going to do that on the back side as well. Making sure that they are right next to where I'm going to apply a string on every single section of the bone. 
since one section has to have a string on it for each bone and there are two sections per bone we have to have a total of four strings for each top portion and then we're not going to have any strings located on the bottom portion because the thumb is a little bit different since all of the muscles that are for the thumb are actually inside of the hand itself they aren't located in the wrist or down the forearm what i'm doing here is now i'm just applying all the strings you can see i'm running through and testing and it looks like it's working when I pull on the string, it moves forward the finger, and now we're going to do that for the next portion. And I will test that, and as you can see, right when I finish up, it will be able to pull the middle portion. So there we go. So I got top and middle portions done for the first half of the string, which is pretty nice. Moving on, we're going to go ahead and take a peek down at the bottom portion and the back side. We're going to make sure that we get all this stuff set up. All right, so we can go ahead and take a look at the rest of the finger. Uh, it seems that we have about three strings on at the moment, so I have to apply just one more. And I kind of had to fix up the, the this top portion of the finger since it wasn't sticking to the bone correctly. So now it sticks to the bone perfectly well. And we can go ahead and make sure that the rest of the bones are all connected. The middle bone is totally fine. It works perfectly. I had no problems with it. It was just the top bone that had the most issue. Now we're going to go ahead and do the hard part. We have to get a swivel going on this thumb because your thumb, when it moves out, it doesn't move in a straight line. It kind of goes in a curve. So I had to figure out where this curve was. This is the hardest part. I actually had to fix this later on because I didn't quite have it in the right spot. But I have to make sure I keep a constant tension on this thing. I don't want this to be falling off. You don't, obviously don't want your thumb falling off of you. So it, it's kind of it's difficult. And I keep doing a thumb test by putting the thumb to the pinky. Because your thumb can obviously reach the bottom and middle and top portions of the pinky, depending on where your pinky lies. So that's a perfect example of, a, of, of thumb testing right there. Just by having my thumb touch every portion of the pinky by moving it in different directions makes it a lot better. Now, you do remember that this is a bone. This, is, this doesn't have any skin on it, so it's going to change the way it moves once we apply uh, artificial skin to it. So it is going to be a little bit different. But if it can touch the pinky with the bone, that means it has more than enough movement to be able to touch it when, when there's skin on top. Because the skin does apply a, a, a good few centimeters of, uh, of distance. So it's, it's going to be nice. I'm applying some, uh, I'm applying some cartilage here, uh, just with the hot glue. And this is going to make it so that you can't bend your thumb any further down. If you know, you can try to stretch your thumb out really wide, but there's something that's keeping you from being able to bend it too far back, and I use cartilage for this. When we get the skin, the skin's also going to help by causing a stretch. And I believe it's the skin that mainly does this, but for now, we're just going to use the cartilage because it's easier for me to be able to hold and maneuver the robotic hand with the, with the cartilage there, because I'm not going to be able to put skin on this for a while. So everything looks pretty good. I keep doing some more tests, and it's not exactly the way I want it, but it's fine. Now I'm going and bending it down, trying to make a, a fist. And it seems like it's pretty good. It has everything correctly. And we're all set. Looks like the hand is all good to go. Perfect. Moving on to the next portion. We are going to start making a plan. We're going to start drawing our plans for our robotic arm, the actual arm section. Uh, we have to understand where the wrist location is, and we have to understand where our secondary bone is that's going to be used for structure. So I'm just drawing this right now we're going to get a good act we have a center axis of rotation which is what the uh, wrist is going to be rotating around and then we have another bone that is just for structure we have parts that are for stationary and we have the rotation around so that end point is going to rotate around the center point and the center point hopefully will stay stationary just like your regular uh arm would so we're going to try and make it exactly the same as our regular arm as much as possible we're not going to be able to do so but we'll try to see if we can get it to as exact as possible now this isn't going to actually make it 180 degrees. I actually did some more tests with my actual hand and uh, my arm can't get 180 degrees around. I don't know how far it can go, but not 180 degrees. We'll be able to get maybe 170 at maximum, um, even even less than that. So I'm not too worried. But this is how the wrist is. But this is how the wrist is going to attach. We're going to attach the top portion right to the wrist, and then the other part is just going to be there as a bone support. So as you can see, that's the bone structure. And so the bone structure is also what connects to the elbow. It's what makes el the elbow function. And that's going to connect to the top portion. The elbow will connect to the uh, everything else. All right. 
So we are on AutoCAD, and as you can see, we're going to be making um, the, the wrist action, everything action for, for this entire arm. We're going to be making the arm portion. Right here, I have the hand portion, and the reason I have this up is because we're going to need to take this end part here. And we're going to need to kind of transplace that over to our arm so that they can fit together to make the wrist swivel action. As you know, I'm not going to be having any specific um, metallic pieces or anything for these joints. It's all going to be 3D printed. And everything that causes movement is going to come from muscles. So the way we stick these together is going to have to be with that stretchy material. We need stretchy material to stick on with that glue and nothing else could be attached. So it all has to be perfectly smooth. And we have to try to find a way to 3D print that. So starting here, it's just going to be a very simple uh, procedure. I'm not going to be doing anything really special. I'm going to make the long portion of the arm first. And I'm going to do that by simply just creating the first half the first portion of the arm with just one sketch and then i'm going to make the back portion of the arm just have that be that circle i'm going to loft it and this is basically just going to create exactly what we need so there it is that goes and lofts it now your bone is a little bit more uh, round near the end than it is near the front so i had to move, i had to kind of fix the loft there now what i'm doing is i'm kind of going back and taking a look at the first half of the hands making sure that uh, i get all the parts correct so that i can set it up I'm going to do an interior loft here. It's just going to make everything easier. So this is the interior loft. Um, we're just going to go ahead and just uh, finish this up. We're going to uh, fill it this stuff out, which is just going to make it easier for us to sand down. Okay, so we made a really basic shape today. Uh, all I did was basically I just made a rod. I lofted the rod, and I created a smooth surface here so that our wrist action can slide around. Now, the wrist has two things that we're looking at. It has to be able, our arm has to be able to go like this. So it has to be able to bend into itself just a bit. And then it has to be able to bend forward and back. Now, by back, I mean just barely back. As you can tell, your hand can't really go that far back a little bit. It can go a lot more forward. So, what we need to do is I'm going to print this out. And then we're going to sand, I'm going to sand down the parts that need to be, ha that need to have the most movement. Uh, here is going to need to be sanded the most along with here and we're going to be able to get this action going right here and then it's going to go back up it's going to curve back up and then it's going to get stuck and that's where the secondary part of the arm is going to come in now I am not going to be uh, printing this out in this episode in the next video, we're going to print out the arm, assemble the arm, assemble the second portion of the arm, and then we can start to see how the hand is going to come together and we'll fix any problems because this is a pretty rough prototype. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you had enjoyed, please go ahead and hit that like button down below. I am loving all the support we're getting for the start of this channel. Now go ahead and subscribe. As you can see, we've only got 18 subscribers and going off to this about section, our first goal is to get to 100. So that's what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to reach 100 subscribers, hopefully by mid-June. That's what I'm going to try to go for. Thank you so much for watching and please, please have a great day. I'll see you next time.